All right, ladies and gentlemen, we're starting again in game number one down here in the bottom right hand corner of the map on Prion Terraces, the Red Zerg player from Root Gaming. Nice enough to reset the score for his opponent who was having a little bit of trouble with lag. We'll see if it comes back to bite him in the butt. Give it up for Jim Rising. What a nice guy. And up in the top left hand corner of the map, we have the yellow Zerg player. Give it up for Renegade. If you're not too sure as much about uh, where he's from and all that stuff. And shout out to Sham2 in the chat. Sham2, really awesome guy. I think he was saying hi earlier. I saw that message. But uh, Sham2 is a really cool guy for those who don't know. He, oh, it's, I don't know what this word means. You, I guess we're on Eastern United States right now. So, not too sure. We'll have to go with it though. This is this is the way that's gonna play out, I assume. I guess they're asking ping. Probably the Renegade Sailing is a 139 ping. Jim Rising in California is definitely gonna have much better ping. But 30 actually is way too good for his ping. Because there he's on the West Coast. Regardless, we do have uh, slightly more economic slash like macro oriented openings, but we do have the follow up of a fast Roach War and not a Baneling that's coming out from Renegade. So he's looking to make a very fast transition into insanely quick Roaches. Now, Jim Rising is not throwing down a Banely nest of his own just yet, but he's getting up enough gas that he can start getting up that Zergling speed if he so chooses. He hasn't really gone for anything of the sort just yet. In fact, he does have the gas for it, but it's not going for it. So we may be seeing Jim Rising also going for his own Roach Warren relatively shortly. Just because he's not going for Zergling speed, it'd be a, a little bit hard to make the Zergling Baneling aggression work. But once he realizes that his opponent is also kind of foregoing the Baneling uh, tech, that is one of those opportunities where you say, like, maybe I could actually go for a big flood of Zergans. But here we go. Zergans moving on in. There's not going to be a lot to clean up these Zergans. Jim Rising should get the pretty much guaranteed scout out and see some of these roaches popping as well as one of these Zergans. Maybe. No, there's no queen in the main base. Very interestingly. So he sees all of these roaches popping out. There's going to be a very aggressive build from Renegade. Now, luckily for Renegade, again, Jim Rising is not going for some big Zergling flood because that would have made it so difficult for Renegade to move out across the map. The Zergans would have flooded into the main base the moment that these roaches moved on out and renegade would have been in a lot of trouble but now jim rising doesn't have a lot of zerglings out this is maybe a moment of opportunity jim rising he just has to hold he has a massive 10 worker advantage he's getting out a wall in to try and cut down the surface area that his opponent can move on in the roach one's going to be finishing up how much larva is jim rising gonna have to spare not a whole lot because he has to make a lot of these zerglings Renegade has a very realistic possibility of potentially just winning this game with this big flood of early roaches. Now, it's not over just yet. Jim Rising going to try and get up as many units as possible. And there's sort of surprise that he doesn't even pull the main base queen. I guess the larva is going to be important, but oh, it's going to be so difficult without even just that added DPS. The spine curl are going to go down without getting a single shot off. Zergling soaking up a bit of fire. The queen's getting in the mix, trying to buy time for some of those roaches to come on out. The roaches are now popping. He's going to be able to get a nice little concavist position, but he's pulling the workers. He knows how important it is to defend over here. The Queens with some transfuse micro does manage to keep another Queen alive for a little bit, but Jim Rising losing a lot of units. Renegade is starting to even up that work count. It's not quite even just yet though. And Jim Rising is starting to move in with these reinforcements. Where are the reinforcements to Renegade? They, they're constantly coming so slow across the map. And this queen, it's not larva injecting, so he doesn't have that additional larva. He doesn't have the economy to consistently produce additional roaches in big, big spurts. So now we have a situation where only seven or so roaches are gonna be on this side of the map. But Jim Rising has the worker advantage still. He's 27 workers. He's mining off of that gold expansion which is something I feel like Renegade should have transferred his workers down further earlier. Because that gold expansion is more valuable than the main base. It doesn't take that long to transfer your workers either. I feel like there's maybe mistakes that uh, Renegade is making now. Jim Rising even getting a, a Ravager in the mix. Going to have that added DPS. Make it harder for this army to move on in. Wow. This is, this is a sign of confidence. Jim Rising, during that entire engagement, has been researching the plus one missile attacks. In most situations, you see a Zerg player in that uh, spot, and they're saying, I need to get up another spine call, I need to get up additional roaches, I need to get up maybe an additional queen. No, Jim Rising saying, no, I can defend this off of just what I have. And that show of confidence works out quite well, as he now is going to be sitting with a plus one missile attacks upgrade. It's sitting so, so comfortably. 
a worker advantage. And even though, yes, Renegade has done some massive droning up, there's layer tech going up for Jim Rising. He's got all of his gas geysers, or almost all of his gas geysers now taken. Uh, he might just go for a big Roach Flood and try and end the game, deny a third expansion while he goes for his own. But he, he does have the potential, the potential of maybe trying to go for a fast layer tech into Spire play, but there is a fairly fast layer tech coming out from Renegade as well. So Renegade not falling too behind in the tech play. So it is going to kind of benefit Jim Rising in that regard. But four gas guys is down. Renegade might be going for with kind of the Hail Mary. Let's go for Mutals as fast as possible plays. The Spire does plop itself down. But is Jim Rising going to give him time for that? Uh, well, we did see in that last series, that PvP series, the dangers of maybe sitting around for too long. The Dark Templar in that last game could have maybe done a little bit of something. But uh, I don't know if we're going to see Jim Rising do the same thing. Jim Rising is a pretty top-notch Mexican Zerg player. He's also a fairly aggressive player, so I'd love to see him just get aggressive. And look at this. There's actually no Overlords out of the map right now for Renegade. This is going to be a bit problematic because he has no idea if there's going to be a move out. And even the few Overlords that were out, Jim Rising has been taken out with the Ravagers. It's a very problematic spot, but that Spire is more than halfway done. And Jim Rising may be losing that timing that I was talking about to get some damage done. He's going for a third expansion, sure. And yeah, he could maybe throw down like a Hydra List Den or something. But I, I feel like this is a really big mistake from Jim Rising. He knows there's no third expansion. He should know. He really should know, a player like Jim Rising, that there are mutals coming out. The fact that there has been absolutely nothing from Renegade. There's no expansion. He's even had the opportunity to poke on forward with a handful of Zerglings to see the Roach Count, to see all these Spine Crawlers. Spine Crawlers at this number are a dead giveaway. The fact that there is, in fact, a fast tech up to Mutalus. But here we go. Roaches moving their way across the map, but the Spire is already complete. The Mutals are on the way, and in decent-ish number. Nine Mutals are enough to clean up a lot of these Roaches. This is for Spine Crawlers and a couple of Roaches. Yeah, they're not going to be able to hold the line for forever, but they're going to be able to buy a little bit more time, and these Mutals are now going to be able to continue to whittle away at this army from Jim Rising. Now, I'm not anticipating that Renegade is going to be able to go through this not taking any damage, but can he at least find some way to defend? Can he go for the counterattack and make it work? Uh, no. It looks like Gem Rising may just have a little bit too much. The DPS from the Mutals just straight up is not there. There was a hidden expansion coming down over here in the bottom left, by the way, for Renegade. But I just don't think it's going to come into effect. Eight workers, five workers left over as that count is continuing to dwindle. And I think that regardless of whether or not the lag is affecting Renegade in game number one, game number one regame. Jim Rising still takes the game. It is once again a 1-0 lead for Jim Rising, our Mexican Zerg player. And with that, we are going to be hopping to a short little break because these players have taken a little bit of time to get their, uh, you know, the next game set up with everything. So I'll see you guys in game number two as we should be starting with that uh, relatively shortly in this Round of 16 match for the DreamHack, Latin American DreamHack, Austin Qualifiers. A very, very long name for that. <laughs> Alright, ladies and gentlemen, let's hop into this very quickly. As you can see, a spawning pool is already finished because up here in the top left, we have the red Zerg player from Mexico leading up to series 1-0 and in this best of three and going for the 13-14, or 13-12. Give it up for Jim Rising. And his opponent in the bottom right-hand corner of the map. We have the yellow Zerg player from Team Death Zone Pro. Also going for a 13-12. Give it up for Renegade. So we got mirrored all-ins coming out from both these players. But oh, look at this. Renegade takes his drones off of gas. Something that Jim Rising is not doing entirely. Jim Rising is going for that bailing nest. And because of that, I feel like Jim Rising is going to have that slight edge. That ever so slight edge in these trades. Uh, of course, Renegade going to have a slightly better mineral count. He's going to have a slightly better economy. He can take a natural expansion potentially and get up additional larva a little bit faster. But it's going to be so important for Renegade to have absolutely amazing control. Especially with this first kind of set of engagements. As he, Jim Rising is going to be the one with the defender's advantage. As Jim Rising is pulling up the, some of these Zerglings, as now he's making a couple of Banelings, as I think he saw those Zerglings for Renegade making his way across the map. Renegade going to have a lot of trouble over here. Zergling Speed is going to finish up for both of these players, but again, Jim Rising is the one that can get aggressive with the Banelings. And here we go. 
Gem Rising, not quite able to catch any of these Zerglings. Gonna have to back up because Renegade does have the overwhelming number of Zerglings over there. But the Banelings are following up closely behind this. Renegade really wants to make this work. He's gonna go down to the loser bracket. He won't be out of the bracket if he ends up losing this game just yet. He's gonna be in the loser's bracket again. So he still has some opportunities to make his way back. But oh man, there's a very, very rough, rough lineup of Kelazor, Jim Rising, Champ. You do not want to go to the loser's bracket. You want all those extra lives as much as possible. And I like this attempt over here from Renegade. Try and go for the counter attack. In fact, he has enough Zergans that he may be able to make it work, but it's going to be a bit difficult just because if Jim Rising even segments off one or two of these Zergans to go to the main base, turn into Banelings, come back down, suddenly this aggression does not work nearly quite as well. Uh, these Banelings are Jim Rising kind of like awkwardly moving around the other side of the map. Trying to find some opportunities to get something done. But Jim Rising not feeling comfortable morphing any of these Zerglings in. I guess he knows that every single one of these Zerglings is actually fairly important to keep this natural expansion alive. And Renegade maybe trapping himself in over here. The added DPS of the Queen also going to be uh, helping out quite a bit. Two of these Banelings do retreat back home. Renegade move, gonna move into the main base. These Zergans lives are pretty much forfeit at this point unless he gets some very, very tricky maneuvers. He's getting some okay trades, I would say. As a Zergling count for Jim Rising, not really there anymore. And Jim Rising also having to pull back all these banlings. So I would say Renegade has done a really, really nice job. Ooh, even getting some, you know, a couple of Zerglings killed over there, sure. But I would actually give the edge to uh, Renegade on that one. Jim Rising really want to keep all these units alive for as long as possible. But here we go, Spinecrawler being burrowed. Renegade has a very nice worker lead right now. Jim Rising, though, does have 10 Zerglings and 2 Banlings out on the map. Gonna continue to flood out, uh, guys, more Queens rather than anything else. Sort of interesting. Here we go, Spinecrawler in the mix. Zerglings and Banlings flooding on in. What does Renegade have to defend? The Spinecrawler is still up, but... Couple of these Zerglings gonna make their way into the main base. There's another spine crawler in the main base, though. Renegade is prepared for the big Zergling swing into the main base. It's gonna work really, really well. Surprisingly well, I would say. Jim Rising gonna lose so many of these Zerglings, and even though, yes, he does drone up quite a bit behind this, he's lost all of his units, and now there's just that small little edge in terms of eight Zerglings out of the map right now to make sure that keeps uh, Jim Rising a little bit honest. He's starting to mine gas again. He's got the spawn crawlers for the defense. He can maybe even think about actually throwing down another, uh, moving that spawn crawler from the main base over the natural and going for a fast tech up the layer. Like, there's so many options, I would say, that are available for Renegade. Whereas Jim Rising has to play a little bit more defensively. He has to go for the Roach Warren. Has to slowly get up a couple more units to make sure he doesn't just die to a big Zergling flood. I'm really actually liking Renegade's situation in this game. But Jim Rising is, of course, not out of it just yet. It is a very minute worker lead at this point. Um, as Jim Rising is even actually starting to take that worker lead for himself. Roach Horn coming down for Renegade. So it looks like we're not going to be seeing a super fast tech up into Lair tech or anything. We're not seeing the third and fourth gas guys just being thrown down. So Renegade may be just saying, I'll get out the roaches. Maybe a little bit, tad bit slower, but still going to be fairly quick. But we're going to see this game finally start to settle down. Uh, it's finally at that point where Jim Rising, that early game aggression, uh, the counter aggression, I should say, is Renegade was the one that was trying to go for the gasless pressure. And Jim Rising said, well, I went for 13, 12, and I have Banelings out of the map. But uh, a really, really solid counter attacks from Renegade did such a good job of just buying so much time that he was able to get up the spine crawlers, he was able to get up everything that he really wanted to. Now, Jim Rising moves in over there. Does he spot the lair tech? Yes, he does spot that lair tech timing coming out at that natural expansion. Now, Jim Rising himself is not going for lair tech. In fact, he did a huge flood of these roaches and ravagers. And even though Renegade has a couple of roaches, I think, that could potentially be made, he's not making any. He's going again for the lair tech. He's only just now starting up the roaches, and this is going to be much, much later. They're not going to be in time for this big pressure play. It's going to be able to take out the spine crawl, at least, if not, do a little bit more damage than that. Bailing is also flooding on, and there's a lot of energy for transfusing the mix. So we'll see if somehow 
these queens can just hold the line for long enough for the roaches to start to pop out. More and more of these roaches are popping out. The Ravagers, though, getting some good damage done. The queens are not transfusing. This is a huge mistake from Renegade. He could actually have so much more survivability over here. Spinecaller does get taken out. Gym Rising is starting to bleed out the roaches, but the reinforcements are continuing to flood on Anthony. I think, I think that Jim Rising maybe has the opportunity to make this work. He's starting to snowball. All the Ravagers have stayed alive during all these engagements. The Zerglings, or sorry, the drones are being pulled off the line at this point. And the Ravagers are going to be able to absolutely massacre that army. Jim Rising taking the worker lead. Jim Rising maybe taking game number two and moving on to the round of eight for the Latin American qualifiers. GG gets called Jim Rising. Taking the game with a follow up aggression. In some ways, you could argue he wins the game 3-0 in a best of three. Since he did technically win the first game, said, you know what? No, you said that you're experiencing lag. I'm okay with that. That's fine. Let's let's reset it. Boom, it's 0-0 again, even though I won that first game. So big congratulations goes to Jim Rising on that. And, uh, of course, Renegade, not totally out of the uh, qualifier just yet, as he did show some pretty strong play. And he's going to move into that loser's bracket match. Uh, let me see if I can find out who he's playing. Let's see. So that was match number... 12 so he is gonna be playing who is he playing let's see loser of 16 loser of 14 loser of 11 that's really interesting i can't actually find it 